All right, good afternoon. I've been uh, kicking around the idea of doing some more tying videos focused on some of the sea run cutthroat and resident coho patterns I've been fishing all winter, but I just haven't got around to it. I'm lazy. Uh, procrastination, been fishing a lot, you know how it goes. But I was going to sit down and tie some flies today, so I thought what better chance to get going with one of these videos. Uh, I'm going to fo be focusing on the flies that I've been using uh, all winter long and then I'll branch out from there if I continue to make more videos. Uh, just going to state a disclaimer right off the bat, I'm not the world's greatest fly tire and I don't really care. Uh, my flies catch fish and that's all that matters as far as I'm concerned. They'll never win any beauty contests and that's okay. Uh, I try to tie them as durable as I can because I want to catch as many fish as I can and that's kind of my bigger concern. Um, as a whole, I like to tie simple flies that catch fish. I do not enjoy tying fancy patterns that require 45 minutes at the vise. My boxes are stuffed full of easy, simple patterns that just produce. And with that in mind, I'm starting off here with the Delia Squid. And when it comes to easy, simple patterns that produce for Sea Run Cutthroat and Resident Coho, this one is really hard to beat. Uh, this fly was created by Mr. Jeff Delia, a well-known local angler and fly tire. Uh, I've never personally met him, but uh, as it turns out, I'm going to get the chance to do so next month. Uh, I'm presenting at a uh, Sea Run Cutthroat uh, workshop up in Victoria, B.C., and Mr. Delia is also presenting. So I'm really looking forward to the chance to, to meet him and, and thank him for the influence that he's had on, uh, on my fishing and my tying. Uh, this is just a slight variant of his original pattern. Um, I tie these a bunch of different ways. It's kind of fun to experiment with. I think ultimately the most important key is the tan tail and the white body. Um, however you want to do it beyond that is up to you. Um, the last month or so I've been tying them this way with a saddle hackle for the collar and I really like how it looks. I like how it swims. It's been producing for me so this is just kind of the way I've been going. Um, it's just a great pot fly. It's probably the first fly that I tie on 98% of the time during the winter when I'm fishing the beach. And it takes a lot for me to switch up. Um, I have a lot of confidence in this fly. If there's fish around, I really feel I will catch them with this fly. Uh, there's times that they don't want to do it, but, you know, that's fishing. Um, I tie this in a variety of sizes. I tie it with and without a cone head. Um, it, it, different beaches, different scenarios. Uh, when the resident coho are sipping euphosids and amphipods and krill and whatnot at, on the surface, um, an unweighted, really, really small delia squid is extremely productive. It's a great searching pattern for just working the beaches, trying to find where the fish are concentrated. Uh, it's just a great all around pattern. And most importantly, in my book, it's easy to tie. So. Just get started, I have a uh, Umpqua U401 hook, saltwater hook, uh, size 8, it's what I had in my box there, uh, I'm getting a little low on hooks, I need to make a supply run here. Um, I tie these on all kinds of different hooks and sizes, uh, generally size 6 or size 8, but uh, you know, I'll tie them down to 4s. Um, I like to use other hooks as well, I like the, the Gamagatsu SC15 is a great hook, I've used it for quite a while now. Um, the last two weeks I've bent out probably a half dozen of them on fish, um, including a really nice black mouth that I incidentally hooked the other day. Uh, so with that in mind, I've been kind of tying up a bunch on, on stronger hooks. Um, I love the way the SC hooks, the SC15 hooks, I don't love the size, I love the shape, I love the way they stick in the mouth, but they're just a little bit <clears throat> not quite as strong. So. Uh, Anyway, you can use any hooks. Um, sometimes lately I've been using even size 4s and then just making the fly a little more sparse. So I have the advantage of the bigger hook but the same size of the smaller one. Uh, however you want to do it, of course that's part of the fun of, of fly tying. Um, I'm just showing you what how I do it and what works for me. Um, your mileage may vary. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Well, before we get started i got to have a Fly tying at red beer just goes hand in hand. So we're going to go ahead and start the thread on the hook shank. I'm using a uh, 6 aught white uni thread here. Wrap it back towards the, the band. 
Then we're going to go with the uh, tan marabou feather here. Um, you can, I tend to just use the tips, but uh, you can definitely pull off the webby, you know, kind of tapered part of the plume if you'd like. I just find that, that for these flies, it really doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. So I just go with the simple, tie it in by the tip and or the, at the tips and call it good. Again, my emphasis is quick, easy, simple. So just get a few wraps on that. And then I like to wrap it pretty much all the way up. This just helps create the uniform body instead of having a sort of a, a bulk tie-in point at the back. And then we're going to go ahead and bring our thread back. Tie in a piece of uh, just a single strand, if I can grab it here, of UV Pearl Crystal Flash. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. It's pretty tiny. Uh, I tied it on the near side, extending just slightly past the marabou tail. Um, and again, that's just a kind of a personal thing. I like my flash to kind of pop out there beyond the tail a little bit. That's how I tie all my coho clousers, and it's just sort of a habit with me. So I got it tied in on the near side, and I'm just going to take this, the long strand, and if I can get that down where I want it. and tie it in on the far side as well. Trim that. Again, just a little bit longer than the, the marabou. Now for the body, I'm going to use some uh, pearl uh, Estaz chenille stuff. <laughs> this stuff is uh, it's great. I really love it for, for saltwater flies. Um, again, I'm going to tie it up at the, the head Wrap it back just to keep that body kind of uniform. This Estaz, it seems every time I buy a package of it, it's different. Um, sometimes it's really, really kind of long and webby. This is more of a traditional, almost a traditional chenille feel to it. And then I'm going to go on ahead and just wrap this up the shank. Tie that off. You can see that this is definitely not a complicated fly. <laughs> okay. Now you could, you could stop right here. You could whip finish this, and I do. I do it all the time, um, and it will fish great. You can catch cutthroat, uh, resident coho, uh, blackmouth, uh, you name it. Um, just because I enjoy it, I am going to tie in a little saddle hackle here. Tie it in at the tip because I want the, the little bit shorter fibers since this is not a big fly. Cut off that excess. And then we're just going to, oh yeah, that happens a lot, especially when I use these tiny, tiny the hackle feathers. All right, I guess I got to pull off another one here. Um, that guy looks good. try this again. As I said, I am not the greatest fly tire in the world. <laughs> kind of want to 
wrap the pull the fibers back as you wrap helps them from getting trapped and kind of help shape it a little bit and I just do you know three or four wraps sort of whatever jumps out at me I think that looks pretty good Tie that off. Now this is one area where I am not pretty as a fly tire. When I'm dealing with hackle, I uh, get it. I see some guys that can just tie these beautifully wrapped patterns with hackle and. I really don't, and I don't care, because I can catch fish with them, and that's... Honestly, for me, it seems the uglier pattern is, the better it fishes, but... I don't know if you've ever had one of those that gets chewed and chewed and chewed, and the more it gets chewed, the better it fishes. I, I don't know why that is, but... Okay, we'll just finish that off with a little whip finish. A little drop of... Uh, Sally Hansen's hard as nails or you know whatever sort of glue or head cement you like to use some people don't like this stuff because of the the odor it doesn't bother me in the least and I it works really well so there you have it just a quick simple Delia squid variant uh, I'll fish this uh, most of the time on an intermediate full intermediate line um, but uh, sometimes I'll fish it on a floater. There's times when the, when the coho especially are uh, sipping right at the surface that, that dead drifting these in a really small version on a floating line is, is extremely productive. But uh, uh, you just kind of got to play with it yourself and see what works for you. Uh, this is one of my all-time confidence patterns, but uh, hopefully maybe you will uh, start fishing it and become yours as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.